Hello you all, welcome to this new edition of Lexio Musica, the place for great lyrics, great music and great meaning. My name is Guilain Prince, I'm a Franciscan friar from Canada and I love rock music for a long time, especially hard rock, metal and prog. Once a week I listen to a new song, for me anyways, and uh, I take the time so to react to it with you all, listen to it with all of you to um, analyze the lyrics, the musical construction. The gen I make only general comments on the music. I could take a lot more time to make the analysis from, a, I would say, a musical point of view, but my, my time being quite limited, I just state very general elements about the melody, the general elements about the um, arrangements and the construction of the song. And from there, uh, I give an opinion on the song, my opinion, of course. And as you know, I'm very, very much interested in the meaning of the song as well. Because for me, uh, what makes the difference between a song I will listen a few times and a song that I will keep in my playlist and listen the rest of my life, is basically associated with the quality of the music, quality of the lyrics, the poetry, and the quality of the meaning. Um, and for me, this makes music, some, some pieces of music stand out from the rest. As for now, we have a long song this week. It's uh, over, let me see, over 24 minutes. It's called The Greatest Show on Earth. It is from the uh, the symphonic metal band uh, Nightwish. And with that piece of music, probably I expect, because there are, aren't that many words, I, sp I expect that song to be uh, as much a musical instrumental piece uh, then it will be a song so um, it's supposed to be one of the greatest songs of Nightwish I'm really I'm really eager to to see that to hear that and uh, so without <laughs> no more time let's dig into the song in three two one been through already two three times into a cycle but it's something cyclical and something from this is emerging yeah emerging <laughs> typical night wish dun, dun, dun. On the cycle, but sometimes the phase. Hmm. It's 
Fantasy. Oh. Troy's Flute. After sleeping through a hundred million centuries, we have finally opened our eyes on a sumptuous planet, sparkling with color, bountiful with life. Within decades, we must close our eyes again. Isn't it a noble and enlightened way of spending our brief time in the sun to work at understanding the universe and how we have come to wake up in it? Yeah. Welcome 
written in the earth the pattern of what we are so the last line of library well gives a little bit too much to human beings I guess again <rire> voilà. Melodic richness. Most people are never going to die because they are never going to be born. 
the potential people who could have been here in my place, but who will in fact never see the light of day, outnumber the sand grains of Sahara. <laughs> oh, sand grains. Certainly those unborn ghosts include greater poets than Keats, scientists greater than Newton. We know this because the set of possible people allowed by our DNA so massively exceeds the set of actual people. Mm -hmm. In the teeth of these stupefying odds, it is you and I in our ordinariness that are here. We privileged few who won the lottery of birth against all odds. How dare we whine at our inevitable return to that prior state <laughs> from which the vast majority have never stirred. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one. Mm -hmm. And that whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, mm -hmm. from so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful yep. and most wonderful have been, and are being, evolved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
No, that's it. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, well, I have great things to say about this. And I have things that you will not be very happy with me. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, there. here is my problem, my, my main problem. It's because I already know human nature. Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you that I already know. I already did a full, I would say, piece, song by song. Um, exploration, trying to understand, and and so I know. I would I would say it. I see this. What I've seen already in the the, the album. Oh, of course, I haven't seen everything yet. I will listen to the whole album before the analysis of the word. Be sure of that. I want it to be as open as possible for this one. Uh, so, from what I already listened to, so that's the fourth song, I see the album as the beginning of something for Nightwish. Um, endless Fall, most beautiful, to be a, a, the be a beginning of a new uh, topic, general topic, or general uh, inspiration for uh, Nightwish. And I see many, many good things in that that musical piece. Uh, I see uh, gorgeous arrangements. I see uh, a topic that I, you know already that I love, the topic of, of astronomy, um, biology, evolution. I love these topics. Uh, uh, fundamental philosophy, fundamental uh, science, um, theory, physical uh, uh, physics theory, all of these topics I've been interested in all my life. So, uh, so this song um, is bound to to be uh, for me very positively received, and, and I must say that um, in reading the text, I really like this song. Of course, there are a few things I, you know. We will talk about Richard Dawkins a little bit later, but just to tell you that uh, there are a few lines that um, both I find ina inaccurate and uh, a bit naive. But this being said, I would say 95% of the song is, is on the topic is fascinating. I love it. I love the, I would say, the uh, artistic presentation of uh, this topic of the, or the uh, origin of the earth for example and uh, uh, the fact that life all the uh, as i understood i will look at the the, the words a little bit uh, more in detail but as i understood uh, in the earth in everything in the, the matter of the earth there's already everything that's that will be in, uh, on earth including us so somewhere is written in life born in on the earth uh, there's already everything that we will become in a way so uh, that's uh, yeah th this uh, i love i love the uh, evolution presentation poetically i love uh, the, in terms of lyrics i must say i i like yeah yeah i like most of the lyrics uh, uh, both poetically, artistically, and the content, okay? But here is my but. <clears throat> I've been fascinating un f fascinated until now on how the album uh, Endless Form Most Beautiful does not strike me as a very melodic, uh, as at one point in the song, the most, and I'm not sure that this melody, something like that, I say, oh, oh, a wonderful, a beautiful melody. I couldn't help myself saying, oh, finally, <laughs> we have a beautiful melody. Because before that, we had, again, these kinds of melodies that are not common in the Nightwish repertoire that I've 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 listened to everything and even in the beginning 
melodies have always been a strong dimension of in fact i can say that so strong the melody are so strong that they become impossible to sing uh, and we saw that this kind of melodies if nightwish didn't have floor jansen uh, the songs of human nature will be almost impossible to sing and we have to be very well um, very well conscient of that uh, the, the complexity of the music sometimes is is out of this world even in, in that very long uh, musical piece we i was not I, i will say it like this melodically i was not seduced uh, by the i was seduced by the topic I, I was I found the the arrangements uh, very rich very sumptuous around this I I saw the melodies as being not as powerful as I would have expected because everybody told me for ages that this is the greatest musical piece of Nightwish and uh, so I was of course I, I, there was a build up Uh, I was of course expecting something that didn't really come. Uh, it's it's a wonderful musical piece. Don't don't get me wrong, but if I compare this piece, 24 minutes with the 31 minutes of Face B of Human Nature, not even close. We're talking about constant in Human Nature second part constant new things new ideas very old music new arrangement everything falls from one section to the uh, the uh, the eighth section into a gorgeous uh, musical piece of 31 minutes uh, this one uh, musically is 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 not the same level for me But it's still very good. It's still very, very good. And uh, like I said, like the topic, like everything. So let's go into, uh, as you understand, because of the length of the song, I had to cut a little bit everything. <laughs> so the analysis will come after I listen to it two, three times and look at cl looking at closely to the lyrics. And so that's why you decided to do that in two, three sessions because... <laughs> <laughs> what a what a piece musical piece <laughs> see you then see you at the analysis of the of of the lyrics bye bye there we go ready for the uh, uh, lyrics the analysis of the lyrics you understand because of the length of the song i couldn't do uh, uh, an analysis of the musical part which Uh, I think there should be someone, um, especially musicologist, uh, digging into the musical part of the song. I will make my comment as usual, but I cannot do a full and complete analysis of the musical dimension of that song. It's a big song. So let's dig into the lyrics. Uh, I remind you. First of all, we reacted to the uh, uh, lyric video. We looked at the... And I made a first reaction. Now, second section. With that window here, the blue one for Nightwish, we will do a short analysis of the lyrics and of the song. As, and, and third, uh, there will be... We will listen together to a live version in Tampere 2015. So... Here we go, it will be a long video, I know, but let's go immediately. First thing first, we have to keep in mind that the song is in five parts and the last one instrumental only. So words in the four, five, four first section. The first one is called 4.6. This to me is not familiar, um, but uh, If I remember well from a geology point of view, uh, I would tend to think that the origin of the Earth or the existence of the Earth would be something like 6 billion to 4.6 billion or something 
I wonder, because of the topic of the lyrics right after, and because of the spoken words, I tend to think that the first section is a celebration of the Earth as, as a, a planet. What do you think, Mother Gaia? Let's go in the lyrics. Arc Ian Horizon, the first sunrise on a pristine Gaia, Opus Perfectum, somewhere there, us sleeping. That's why I think it's the Earth, existence of the Earth, Archean Horizon, Arc, first, first period of time, the, f the first era, literally, uh, an horizon of the first era, first sunrise, uh, on uh, Earth, the um, personified Earth, is it in Greek mythology, I think, Opus Perfectum, perfect works uh, you would have I'm pretty sure um, there's uh, an echo of that into the title of the side B of human nature all the works of nature which adorn uh, etc um, so the earth at its, at its origin or her origin uh, here personified is perfect Okay, somewhere there, us sleeping, humanity already uh, within the matter of the earth, but not yet awakened. Spoken word after sleeping through a hundred million centuries, we have finally opened our eyes on a sumptuous planet, sparkling with color, bountiful with life. Within decades, we must close our eyes again. Isn't it a noble and enlightened way of spending our brief time in the sun to work at understanding the universe and how we have come to wake up in it? Uh, beautiful quote. Uh, I haven't looked uh, who said that, but since uh, uh, since uh, Sir Richard Dawkins is called on this album, and if I'm not mistaken, have I read that he is the one reading it? Um, it Richard Dawkins, uh, from my point of view, when he celebrates the beauty of of nature the beauty of uh, the biological process when he, he he gets excited by all of this beauty i love him i love him i think he he he, he is uh, he communicates beautifully the uh, i would say the awe the awe in front of the immense beauty of nature and here he celebrates something very nice with the the word sleeping waking up so now we can see that in the first verse the sleeping waking up is human nature the human uh, the human as a species is already there the matter is already there it's just that the it, it, it has not sprung as a distinct uh, uh, being from the, not the magma, but the, of the tapestry of the origins. Um, sumptuous planet called for beautiful. Well, I don't think there are many things that have to be explained, but the fact that our lifespan is a few decades, and in this very short period of time, isn't that a great thing? that we try to understand where do we come from where do we go and we can uh, uh, think about the universe and our origin this is great great quote second part life probably the first is the earth geologically <laughs> and uh, probably the water the fact that the water begins to to uh, uh, you know, I would say assemble at the at the surface of the rocky surface of the planet, 
and the atmosphere and so on. So now life will appear. The cosmic law of gravity pulled the newborns around a fire, a careless cold infinity in every vast direction. Lonely fairer in the Goldilocks zone, she has a tale to tell, from the stellar nursery into a carbon feast. Enter Luca. The tapestry of chemistry, there's a writing in the garden leading us to the mother of all. This is a beautiful way, a poetic way, to talk about how we understand as we speak the origin of the world. Cosmic law of gravity pulled the newborns around the fire. Um, I would tend to think that it's if it's at the cosmic level, I would tend to think it's it's a, um, a solar system around a solar, which would be here fire, and the newborns. I would think it's planets, planets, uh, gravitating around a fire uh, in a careless cold infinity. That's space, basically, in every vast direction that's pretty accurate to be frank long uh, in uh, lonely fairer so fairer uh, traveler in a gold deluxe zone gold deluxe uh, i remember this word is very <laughs> rare to me of course there is the um the fairy tale or the, 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 the we say a conte in french hein? boucle d'or boucle d'or I remember a long time ago, I don't know, I should have verified that. When I was interested in astrophysics, we used to talk about, if I'm not mistaken, of the Goldilocks as being uh, uh, the distance kind of, of rings around uh, a sun. In, and in this section, of the uh, uh, the um, uh, the distance from the sun there would be the conditions to uh, for life to emerge so a uh, traveler in the goldilocks zone meaning the earth being in the, exactly at the right at the right distance from the sun to uh, give birth to life does that make sense to you? Ah, if not, just write it down. I'm not sure about that. It because it's a very. F uh, I was uh, supposed to be in astrophysics. Uh, that was my interest at 19, 19, 20, 21 years old. I was in physics at McGill University in in uh, Canada. So that would be my guess for this. Okay, just tell me if I'm completely in, like we say, in the field. Uh, who is she has uh, the uh, tale to uh, I would tend to think here it's the fairer um, being Gaia uh, the, the the planet Earth what do you think of that from the stellar nursery to a carbon feast um, this would be the origin of the Sun stellar nursery as being a nursery for stars into a carbon fissa from the origin of our own sun to the uh, cradle I will say of carbon or a feast of carbon <laughs> a feast of carbon that's what that's how it enter Luca Luca oh, what is the meaning of this um, it it means it means the very first uh, living uh, entity, but not yet divided. Uh, I should have looked on the internet for the. But I remember what it means. Luca is an undivided uh, living, and from there. All life sprung, all life, and by that I mean all the veg vegetation, all the animals, everything living, and the differentiation of the different 
uh, species so undifferentiated uh, I don't remember so you will write it down here again I'm sorry I should have looked um, the tapestry of chemistry here tapestry um, there, there would be two understanding of the word tapestry tapestry of course can be uh, the decoration the decor of something I don't think it's the meaning of this tapestry could be the pattern the pattern of of uh, the chemical pattern of everything that will be on mother's mother earth uh, so uh, pretty much everything will come from this original pattern what do you think of that tapestry of chemistry there's a writing in the garden yeah to me it's already written in this first entity what everything will become um, to to a mother of all okay maybe it's not accurate enough for you but to me it makes sense anyway I, I, I was able to understand it at first reading this this verse um, we so and then you have we are one in harvest there was this grain that was uh, no procession the first grain we are come from the first grain we are one we are a universe uh, we are all together we are a universe but probably we could say that each of us is a universe at the same time four bears of what will be science of the Devonian sea um, uh, the, the um, Devonian sea if I'm not mistaken because we have a beautiful uh, geological site on the Gaspé Peninsula with uh, fossils from the Devonian period where where the the um, vegetation and animal uh, were very uh, they were not numerous I think in, in the Gaspé Peninsula there were only seven or eight kind of trees and and um, the connect the connection between the, the 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 fish and what will become reptiles I think is there again I, my vacation with there will were 10 years ago but that's it that's that says we in the very first of what we saw the Luca were the the, the forebears of what will become the as uh, science the, the all all the manifestation of the Devonian seas Aeon's pass you know what it means writing the tale of us all mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day new opening mm -hmm. for the greatest show on earth you you got it greatest show on earth is i think it's the clear conscience of our privilege we are to be living and when we realize that we become amazed by what is nature what do you think of that <laughs> um eon channel this is the first line i am not sure what it means so if you have any idea of of, of this um welcoming the outside world to the stuff of stars um channels so is there some kind of 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 interconnection with outside and inside uh stuff of the stars is the stuff of matter is the stuff of earth so exchange between the inside and the outside of these original um uh, undifferentiated creatures what do you think of that I, i'm not sure again like i said i'm not a biologist and a even less paleobiologist <laughs> bedding the tree of a biological uh, holy um bedding the tree uh for me uh, uh, what do you think in this basic matter you have the tree of species a species the tree of uh, arachne uh, fish 
and then uh, uh, um, birds. <laughs> What do you think of that? The beginning of life already has embedded the tree of everything that will uh, sprung from this original one, Luca. Let me think. Uh, let me uh, let, let, write down what you think. The tapestry of chemistry, like we said, there's a writing in the garden leading us to the mother of all. We already saw that. We are one with the universe. It's exactly like the fourth. And then we go. We are here to care for the garden. The wonder of birth of every form most beautiful. Every form most beautiful. We are here. I wonder who is the we here because we are here in the uh, in the uh, chorus means we were already there in that Luca. Uh, is it again? We are here to care for the garden. Uh, is it m mutual care that should be part of all species? Um, I would tend to think, what do you think? I would tend to think that here it would be the humans who, being part of this original magma of life or tapestry of life, should be the caretaker of the garden. And of course, we will see in the other uh, paragraphs that they are not. But we are not. But here I think there's some kind of a, a, a statement that we as human beings, we should have taken the position of taking care of all this. The wonder of, the birth of every form most beautiful, every form most beautiful. As part of the orig original uh, universe, as part of the original being, we should have taken care. Um, But maybe it's too much anthropocentric uh, yet, because we are not yet. We will arrive in the tool maker section. So maybe I'm just a little bit uh, too far ahead. Let me let me think. Uh, let me see what you think. Uh, you already know the chorus. So we won't go through that again. And then we enter the tool maker. So that's the beginning of uh, the human presence. If you remember the second side of human nature, Anthropocene. Anthropocene is the era of the human. It's the sixth or seven uh, section out of eight. So we are way after. There was a lot of stuff already before we arrived. After a billion years, so you see, uh, the show is still here. <laughs> Not a single one of your fathers died young. So life was very slow, very, very long, the time span maybe of every individual uh, was not all that long, but as a species it was long. All those who preceded you, it was a long process. The handy travelers out of Africa, little Lucy of the Afar, so Lucy you know probably is the oldest Um, anthropoid uh, animal, anthropoid, I hope it's the, <laughs> the good word, the closest to be a human, uh, probably has been the origin of all the, uh, of all this, these, these lines, these lines of, of apes and, uh, and we were handy traveler, yeah, handy Uh, tool maker, traveler, because we went out of Africa, being the birth of you, the human uh, species, Lelucy, uh, from afar, so travel, and uh, gave birth to fantasies. Here, I think it's it's positive, fantasy to idolatry. I don't think here it's positive uh, because idolatry. Uh, is uh, um, it's a religious attitude towards something that is within the world or within the human perception and so here would make gods of of limited thing 
I would go into that direction. Maybe to maybe here is implied a religious attitude or feeling in general. That could be my first guess here, but I don't want to impose on this. But I think it a religious, a little bit like in procession. You remember I told you here in in death. No, the living, the living, uh, dead afraid. Look at the moon. What was it? And found care in the womb. And I told you, I think this is the poetically the origin of religion. And some people say, no, 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 but, but, but yeah, I think so. <laughs> Here, same thing. Fantasy, idolatry. So religion as being a, a weak fantasy. <laughs> and, and idolatry, is it giving birth to fantasy, to idolatry, to self-destructive weaponry? So the tool maker becoming a, a, a maker of tools that will self-destruct maybe not by hitting myself but by hitting my neighbor my my the one my peer so uh, we destroy each other uh, at first we destroy human other human beings uh, i don't know if here is implied fantasy giving idolatry giving self-destruction weaponry that would mean that self-destruction weaponry comes from idolatry uh, this infinite comment that is made on religion as being the root of every war. Of every war. Mm. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll let you with this. But I think, uh, knowing Thomas, I think there's the uh, possibility here that this is what is implied. Enter the God of... So enter Luca, enter life, and here, the God of gaps. <laughs> deep within the past atavistic dread of the hunted <laughs> my lord <laughs> when it's so i would say so uh, it, there it makes me laugh <laughs> i'm sorry god as the one who fill the gaps <laughs> the gaps this i've read in old not very good philosophy in general but uh, still some people are promoting that way of thought today so uh, gods or uh, is the explanation when we cannot understand this is what it means the god of gaps so i bring god as an explanation when i don't understand so when they are, there is gaps in my knowledge, deep within the past, so it's in our past, <laughs> atavistic dread of the hunted, this means an old, an old and hidden reflex, hidden in our, I would say, the, in the DNA <laughs> of an old ape. <laughs> of the one who is hunted as an old reflex this is this paragraph is exactly what tribal is, is saying remember when i said that the uh, when i made the analysis of of tribal i said my lord the only place where there are growls <laughs> On, on human nature it was at the beginning of music and when the when it was a pre prehistoric man <laughs> and i said there's a connection that thomas and nightwish makes bef between the tribal mindset and the old prehistoric mindset <laughs> this is so i won't say it i don't want to make you angry but <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's continue. Oh my lord. <laughs> okay, enter Iona, the cradle of thought, the architecture of understanding, the human loss to feel so exceptional, the, to rule the earth. Okay, here it's a very interesting uh, paragraph because it has mixed feelings about something good. Okay, Iona, we, I would say, let's use it as a greek culture synonymous in 
Greek philosophy is the cradle of thought philosophies. Sophia, knowledge, the love of, 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 of wisdom, the love of knowledge, the architecture of understanding, the logic on which you can build great knowledge. I'm pretty sure it's the meaning here. But there's also, um, it's written, the human loss to feel so exceptional. So in that logic, in that uh, cradle of thought, there's also a sense of superiority. Uh, a loss to feel exceptional and a loss to rule the earth, to, to bring domination on the earth. And I think historically that's interesting. Eh? Um, is the, in, the industrial uh, phase of humanity corresponds um, one century with the rediscovery of philosophy, the Renaissance. Eh? And I think that it's not false to say that in the Western uh, heritage that is closely linked with the Industrial Revolution, there is this impression that we can do whatever we want with nature. I don't think it's connected as such because, uh, it, for example, uh, many ecologists, they, they talk about Genesis 1 uh, uh, pr becomes numerous and so on, fill the earth and, and dominate uh, uh, the, the world. They see that as the origin of the attitude of human being um, to dominate the world and as the origin of the uh, industrial revolution. But f for me, it makes no sense at all. This This view makes no sense at all. I will tell you why. It's th this, this text existed 2,000, 2,500 years uh, before it, and it, it didn't trigger the Industrial Revolution. No, it, it was, this text was said in a very harsh <laughs> nature, desertic region of the world. So uh, everything had to be domesticated j j just for the human being to survive. <laughs> in that world but but from the beginning of the industrial re revolution i'm quite certain that some people found in that text justification to do whatever they want and i'm yeah i think it corresponds but it corresponds as well with this uh, ethnocentric western mind that uh, their logic and their knowledge is, is, is above everyone else's. <laughs> I think the Western world has really a complex of, of superiority that is dooming in a way our planet. Uh, and, and, and this is why I find this text quite interesting because in rationality, even in scientific knowledge and technical knowledge, there can be a lot of destruction. And in the old philosophical way, the knowledge uh, should be accessible to those who already have wisdom, which is not the case, because knowledge today is possessed by people who want to make money. They don't want to help the world or help the people or uh, take care of, of, of creation. So there is no wisdom in the possession of knowledge as we speak. And I'm not talking about political agendas with knowledge and everything else. So I'm just saying that th this is a very, very interesting verse. Very interesting verse. I, I find this, uh, we say ambivalence. Uh, the, the, yeah, it's, it's good to be the cradle of thought, the cradle of, of, of rationality. But at the same time, it gives you a, 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 
an understanding, a self-understanding of superiority. You think that you are better, and you, th and the Western culture thought for many centuries that they were better than it. Than a colonialism is based on a perception that we are superior. Yeah. Well, I I think it's a very good, very good paragraph. Hunger for shiny rocks. Yeah. Uh, gold and, and for giant mushroom clouds I think here it it goes from an appetite for gold and money to the extreme power of the uh, given by the atomic bomb yeah I think that you have a very clear connection with the previous verse here the will to do just as you'd be done by uh, so you can yeah, you, you you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, enter history, mm -hmm. the history of human life, the grand finale. So that's the end of uh, the the uh, time span. That's the final era. Enter rat kind. Uh, I was expecting that human kind. A rat kind. I is that the fact that the mankind is a rat kind that would be interesting isn't it well if you have another interpretation just write it down here okay uh, next it's the second chorus which will be repeated quite a few times man he took his time in the sun had a dream to understand a single grain of sand he gave birth to poetry, but one day it'll cease to be. Greet the last light of the library. Hmm. Human being uh, took his time under the sun, so he, he existed for quite a while under the sun, under good, great conditions. Had a dream to understand. You, you already got that one. Uh, but to understand what? Is it had a dream to understand a single grain of sand no i think the man is a single grain of sand and that he gave birth to poetry i think that the single grain of sand in the universe a very tiny piece of universe has a dream to understand and, and gave birth to poetry so understanding and poetry as being beautiful things of the human being but one day seems to be um, as an individual but as a species as well greet the last light of the library I think that the the, the, the history here uh, geological history I would say uh, animal kingdom uh, the living there's they are these are um, I would say uh, time periods and the last book the last light of the library um, when the light will be turned off the library will not be able to be read and i think here the the the, the library being the universe and the tapestry within the luca as being something given to understand and to be read to be uh, understood and so the human being when the human being turn off the light his own existence there's nobody else to understand and this is the the, the, the basis for the, the the song procession procession in human nature uh, where this it seems to be a extraterrestrial species or a personified a celestial being witnessing the the origin of everything on the earth and so on and then at one point uh, will be witnessing the end of humankind and saying oh my lord I'm so sad that we I lost the one I I, I could talk to in a way we were here that's probably for me that's the striking moment of that song is is we were here we we are present to this are we fully conscious that we are there and we are fortunate well in fact let's not talk 
because the understanding, as if we needed understanding, but uh, I think, yes, he wanted us to, to understand clearly. There's this long quote of Sir Dawkins, uh, we are going to die, okay? And that makes us the lucky one. Yeah, because most people are never going, I won't read it, it's very clear. Um, so from the origin the vast majority have never stirred so uh, we exist we are there isn't that great to be living and to be able to understand and to conceive and to do poetry yeah that's that's wonderful when uh, sir dawkins talk like that i'm all all the way with him I remember so well reading his, one of his books because the subtitle was The Delusion God, the God, Delusion or Delusion of God. And of course, as a theologian, I was interested in reading it, at least for that. And I was amazed by the beauty, the celebration of life, of biology, of creation, of evolution, and all of this. And I. Like I said, I would, for one half of the book, I would have said uh, amen to everything. But the other half, <laughs> yeah, it, made, it made me laugh to tears sometimes. Yeah, 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 because, you know, sometimes um, scientists say to theologians, men like me, uh, when you begin to talk about science, you're ridiculous. <laughs> well, I can tell you that some scientific, when they try to do philosophy or theology, they are ridiculous as well. <laughs> not very good philosopher, not very good theologians. And I would, uh, yeah, I think a good counsel from someone else would have helped him to say things that are not only inaccurate, but completely, uh, they are, you <laughs> If you want a good critique of religion, I'll give you one of my books here. Uh, Post-colonial uh, criticism or feminist. <laughs> this is real, real good stuff. <laughs> Not the book of Mr. Dawkins, but I don't want to offend anybody. But, but what I have to say, when he says that, when he writes that, when we have the quotes at the beginning, and many great parts of his book i i was yeah i was all the way behind him and saying yes sir that's great that's great we don't realize i think it's it's most this best contribution to this beginning of 21st century will be that um he helped people to realize how fortunate we are i i think from a scientific point of view this is great. He, he was able to put uh, conviction and emotion in a side scientific perspective. And for that, his contribution is wonderful. Wonderful. No problem with that at all. After we see, uh, we see the different type of style. If I'm not mistaken, it's a quote from... Uh, um, uh, the origin of species. Um, I'm just, I just miss it for now. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one. And that while this planet had gone cycling on and according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning and less forms, most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolve isn't that a beauty that's a beauty <laughs> and uh, just just to let you know here of course this this author which is the the great author of uh, the evolution um uh, just miss because as i said to uh, son nom um originally brief uh he was a believer. Uh, he was uh, probably a Christian or a Jew. Uh, oh, my Lord. I'll be back in a second. I cannot miss that one. <laughs> and, 
Of course, Charles Darwin. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, Charles Darwin um, originally breathed into a few from for for him. The, there is a there is a sparkle that is still uh, associate with with his understanding of of the origin of the world, a religious one. But anyways, from a single one to the the most beautiful and most wonderful endless forms this is great eh? this is great okay fifth sea worn driftwood well there you have it the origin and the end the earth will come back to its original state uh, it would have done it by itself by herself i should say but with the help of human being it will be even faster <laughs> <laughs> so sea worn driftwood you know what is sea war sea worn driftwood it's th these these trunks and 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 uh, trees that are floating and are on the, uh, the 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 beaches everywhere in the world dry completely dry and we make uh, beautiful fires of that wood um yeah nothing is left nothing is left after the earth is back to its origin so let's go now so the music is complex a complex structure in five parts the last completely instrumental two, two choruses on the same melody close anyways um and these choruses are in part two and four the arrangements are sumptuous um again i maintain that in the album endless form most beautiful we don't find the uh, usual melodic genius of Tuamis. I haven't heard the whole album yet. I will this coming weekend. Um, I, I maintain that in the four songs, Elan was the best, melodically I mean. I don't mean it's the best song. It mel the melody was beautiful, well constructed, well, the whole song is was very beautifully written here in that song um we don't see that kind of beautiful melodic line still it offers greatness everywhere from every side arrangement structure dynamics very smooth very slow very big very strong passages yep it's one of the greats of nightwish here one of the greats of nightwish it's not my favorite among the greats um i prefer the others the four others and i personally i prefer a song like the beauty of the beast to this one but i understand that this is a a, a beautiful composition uh really a very complex one it, it is not, like i will say uh, it is not a song i will go back often uh, not because of the topic i love the topic it's more uh, it's it's heavy it's long it's well we will see in terms of lyrics lyrics there's a balance between tones that are evocative poetry and clearly stated in prose in spoken voice but some passages are not evocative writing um poetry built on scientific knowledge watch this is what will be human nature as well the full album um now in terms of analysis of the song first nature by itself is balance it's pristine mother gaia comes from a pristine state and will go back to that pristine state original state okay so there is pristine original to be the natural way that gaia is okay and this will happen but faster with the contribution of human auto destructive and destructive destructive behavior the human being the tool maker make things it, it will happen uh, faster because the rhythm accelerates with the you the tool master uh, the tool maker humankind is the beginning of the unbalance is infinite thirst for knowledge power control is like a, like a cancer and uh, of course personally i don't i don't agree with that but i see this is what you have in the song 
as a vision of of the human into nature as being that uh, that it's part of the uh, disbalancing of nature so false knowledge here described as idolatry god of gasps is triggered by fear thought through knowledge which will give us reason logic science poetry is not exempt of false at the same time it's it's better than the first one but there are faults associated with these uh, even if it's fundamentally good uh, it makes the human feel exceptional and above nature and because of that um, it's it, it has I would say unforeseen uh, bad consequences something good at the origin ends up not being the, all that good that would be my take on this what do you think hmm? what do you think anyways I want to read you okay so the, my opinion on the song it's an ambitious project of blending science poetry and symphonic metal this is a big musical piece but for me it suffers a little bit from it its own heaviness it's it's a bit a heavy piece musical piece um it, what makes it not so exceptional for me is that um uh there is something missing this is a little spark missing in that song even if there are great moments absolutely great moments but there's a a little something uh, ingredient that would make it uh, impossible to, to to go around you know I, oh no I, I have to listen to it again I don't feel like it like uh, well I don't feel like it towards the uh, studio version let's see what I will think after this the the, 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 the live version though but my problem <laughs> and I will tell you something my problem is that I know human nature and to me this is human nature in the making it's it's the project in its infancy that will become human nature and with this song i see clearly many connection with music harvest procession all the works of nature that adorn and even harvest harvest the song is the end of the the entrop the end of the human uh, the human um, I would say era and at the same time probably the end of uh, a good part of nature uh, so I see already so for me when I, I, I when I hear weak fantasy and I compare to tribal for me there's no comparison possible tribal is much much better when I see uh, uh, yours is a an empty hope and I see noise <laughs> noise much much better when I see this song and I compare to music harvest procession all the works and harvest oh I s <laughs> for me it doesn't stand the comparison it's for me harvest it's it's all this but perfected compared to this one so my problem is that I have analyzed and I love absolutely love her uh, the, the album human nature so for me this is a little bit like uh, going to but it's not yet there so uh, I have the fault of knowing the the next album and not maybe appreciating this one to its value I what do you think about that that's my I, I'm not I'm not uh, inspired I'm not inspired I'm not uh, amazed like I was constantly in human nature from one song to the other not even one the the one that I stayed a little bit like what was music because i didn't know what to expect first first song of nightwish i ever analyzed i didn't know what to expect 
But when I listened to it, I said, ah, ay, ay, ouch, wow, that was, oh, intricate and beautiful. And so I, I was just a little bit on a reserve on the first one, but not the others. <laughs> so the joyful of celebration of, of uh, uh, your or our very experience is unique and wonderful in this song. The beautiful abstracts from uh, Dawkins delivers what he has the best to offer. I really think that in these two abstracts, they, they, they took the very best of Dawkins. And, and for that, I really appreciate both Nightwish and Dawkins. Of course, I don't agree with the, <laughs> with the origin of fate as filling the gaps of poor knowledge of the. For me, for me, there's it, faith is associated with a presence, a presence with the level of knowledge and observation I have at a certain point in time. The, the, these were brilliant minds. The way they understood the world, the way they understood the human being. And they, 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 they discovered a presence in all that. For me, there's no fear in there. Um, and, and, and for me, they are great poets and, and, and imaginative and, and great creators of stories. And there is a presence in all that. So there's a character in that world that they discern. You might, you might not know it or you might not agree with it, but I don't think they were uh, filling only the gaps of poor knowledge. <laughs> Anyways, I don't think religion is a weak fantasy at all. <laughs> bon, ben, let's see. So next week, here it is. We are finished with Nightwish for this year, but I have another project for next year. So stay tuned. Uh, in 2022, there will be another project related with Nightwish. But for next week, we will begin a series of six weeks on the band The, the Warning. If you don't know them, they are three Mexican sisters from 16 to 24, 21 years old. Uh, I've listened to their previous album. And I found them fascinating. The the writing, both the music, the 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 lyrics, and um, as musicians, they amazed me already with the album "Crime of a Murder Scene." If I remember well, they launched an EP last summer. I listened to one song. All the others will be new for me. I will discover them with you. I want you to discover them with me. They are great musicians, composers, singers, performers, three young women, uh, wonderful. So we will do six weeks, six songs. One of these songs is in Spanish, so I will, try, I will work my Spanish a little bit. And uh, don't forget, reaction and analysis will be in English with subtitles in eight languages. Uh, on the studio version first and a live version when it exists after the premiere of the series on uh, um, on uh, the uh, the uh, warning will be next week be there i want you to learn something if you don't know them come come we will have lots of fun and uh, we will see that you won't be disappointed so this is it for the um, for the explanation of the so don't forget you can subscribe give me your comments down here i want to read you and you know that i answer to all of you every single one comment i answer for me it's the beginning of a dialogue this video and for now we are in for a great ride as i i've heard from you it's the song the greatest show on earth in temporary 2015, beginning in three, two, one. Oh. Yeah, I found a, a live video with the lyrics. cyclical remember 
Yeah, his music coming out of a tree. I love the decor, simple decor, Night Witch, with their beautiful screens. Hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, the sky, the origin of the planet from the sky. Oh, that's a big show. Tempere, Finland, Finland. And little changes in the Progressions of go oh no synchronized fireworks this is very difficult to do That's a beautiful melody, this one. Symphonic orchestra playback and uh, not playback uh, tracks. I hear the oboe. Ah, there she comes. Star of the section. Huh? That will be the quote. Life. 
within decades, we must close our eyes again. Isn't it a noble and enlightened way of spending our brief time in the sun? To work at understanding the universe and how we have come to wake up in it. melody of the refrain I see a turtle. <laughs> turtle is lost in space. work for me this part <laughs> so Thomas This works for me. This works for me? But until now, there is this theme replayed since the beginning. If not, it's the spoken words. So, until now, you have the melody of the verse and this melody played differently. Go Kai.
10 minutes, huh? Yep. That's the impression I got. That's it. Should go back up. Oh, that's the section with the animals. Beautiful floor. Control of her voice. Marvelous. I told you. Link with music and tribal is here. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Tubular bells. <laughs> Something scary. destructive behavior yep I prefer Marco on this. Mm -hmm.
yet. I'll tell you something after. That's great. Great moment. The air that we were here works up there with floor. And I don't think there will be the instrumental section. Uh, oh, they will have the quote quotes from Darwin and Dawkins. Dear Marco, what a beautiful smile. And Pooh giving picks, guitar picks. Oh, that's a beautiful sight. What a great venue, eh? I wonder how many people are there. To me, it looks like. Uh, is it 40,000? 50? Wonderful. Is it a soccer, uh, um, a football stadium normally? Ah, uh, Troy. We were here. Great. Bravo. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a football stadium. That's gorgeous. Bravo. Yeah, with high heels. Oh, floor cannot be matched. Yeah, beautiful picture. Great stuff. <laughs> floor has to let herself go down. <laughs> Great stuff. Wonderful, eh? Oh, that's the city. Oh. oh, that's nice. Okay, well, that's good enough for me. Let's stop it here. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. There is Never in a Nightwish sound before I looked at my watch. <laughs> for the first time well listen to the studio version i watched uh, how long it was uh, for two reasons 
The first one is that when it's played by the flute, the main theme of the song, it's beautiful because there are intonations there. He does, he does alteration with his finger. It's beautiful, the organic sound. And then you, the, 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 the beat enters and then you hear it. I think it's with the keyboards. Then I recognize the same theme I just listened. So when it was very slow, it was beautiful. Played by an organic instrument. Okay. When the, the pace is faster, I, f I don't find it as much as interesting as is when it was slow. And it's repeated and repeated and repeated. And it's repeated in a way where uh, Floor is at the very, at the top of her voice, very strong. Uh, not only she's high, but she gives a lot of power. And I think it flattens the melodic quality of the song. Uh, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't work. At this moment, it doesn't work. But then, it comes back again with the second chorus a little bit later. And then it's a song, an octave lower, an octave lower. And then we hear the melody, beautiful melody, song by Floor. And she sang it, I think, two times and another part with the flutes, if I'm not mistaken. And then we go. she goes back all the way up. And there again, for me, it doesn't work. But for me, it might only be a problem of, of the mix because the voice of, of um, Marco in this section, I love. And if, for example, um, she is really put in the front as the, the lead singer and Marco in the back, I would have preferred the other way around. Her as a back vocal and him, of course, it... The, she would have been the charge very high, but as a back vocal, I th for me, it would have been better because I love the voice of Marco in that section. Uh, spoken word, of course, there are no not much melody. There's a nice melody in the first section, uh, okay melody in the third section. But the impression that it was uh, that I looked at my uh, watch after 10.38 is that I've heard the same melody played and played and played over and over again. So uh, this is the first thing. The other thing is um, uh, about the song is... Um, for me, I cannot escape the fact that all of this is human nature in the making. I cannot expect it. It's, it's, it's impossible for me to ignore and that I know a more mature and po a most a more beautiful way to say that these, all these things are said again in the next album so great song i understand why it's it, it you put it in the five big ones but for me the four others are before <laughs> this one and uh and it's a big song it's a big but i think it suffers like i said uh, from its heaviness uh, as if thomas wanted to say everything in one song and in a wiser way <laughs> in human nature he said it in 9 plus 8 17 pieces of music and you have pretty much the same content and I think he, he went far beyond this uh, in the next album so this is it for our 24 songs of Nightwish plus the album Human Nature that's 34 that must be something like 57 58 videos about Nightwish it's been a wonderful wonderful journey and I will see you next year for all of you Nightwish fans there will be something else for you next year but for now it will be first the warning at beginning of 2022 it will be Arion the Netherlander uh, exceptional artist with uh, we will do a whole album of his 
and it will be great i'm sure of that already so see you next week bye bye all